Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Sports Sunday. I'm Andres Afar alongside Joe Scarella. Joe, I'm sure you'll be pleased to hear with a hockey-filled edition of Sports Sunday. Andreas, what do you see? Yeah, guys, I'm, I'm a little winded right now because we were told to move officers, and the SWAT team, we believe, have moved in, and now I'm going to show you where they are. We were beyond that point where there are some cones and, and some of that blue line, as you can see. Troopers have moved in. It is, it is. They have asked them to disperse uh, a few times. Uh, last time we saw you, you heard it over the, the loud screen. Now they've told us to move far, as far back. They are trying to get people to go home. We did catch a little whiff of tear gas. They gassed. They advanced rather quickly. I'm sure as Matt has, has told you, uh, but they're telling most people to go home, even us, soon to go home. Um, they're being respectful, but uh, again, they are advancing as we speak right now. They're advancing. They're telling people, you got to go home. Guys, I'm going to send, and, and some projectiles are still being thrown. I don't know if you guys saw that, but they are uh, they are trying to disperse people as quickly as possible right now. We're going to send it back to you guys. Andrea Safar is live in Fargo tonight to tell us what gas prices are looking like for the holiday weekend and what the Minnesota State Patrol is doing to prepare for more drivers on the road. Andreas? Kirsten, Dana, as you can see, the price of gas right now, right here, is $2.63. And if you walk with me a little bit, you'll see people still filling up their tanks, really just having to bite the bullet. Now, according to AAA of North Dakota, $2.63 is lower than the state average, which is $2.75. Well, the state will be divided right down the middle this week. NDSU UND week, no middle ground, Andreas. That's right, you're either on one side or the other, really. And it used to be referred to as the game of the year in North Dakota, and no doubt it'll be a big one on Saturday between NDSU and UND. Well, guys, tailgating has moved from the parking lots to the lines and right outside the stadium, right outside Toyota Stadium. As you can see, celebrations haven't stopped. They're still going. We got horns up, we got some Dukes fans, guitar playing. We got just about everything. But before, I'd like to point you out, we got the, the full get up here. Check out this sign, Domination. Buys are going to be for eight in nine years. Could you believe it? Now, guys, who's going to win? Bison, 24-17. That's my prediction, too. 17. Go, Bison. No! Two sideline reporters for this game. Let's go down to Andrea Safar covering the Cheyenne Mustangs. Well, guys, six years in the making. Cheyenne is already making its first ever Dakota Bowl appearance. Of course, Century ended Cheyenne's campaign last time at the semifinal stage. And the group of 27 seniors remembers that all too well. Uh, Coach Newton just told me moments ago that they're determined to leave the Fargo Dome with a bit of history and their first ever state title. Dom? Of this 3A championship game, Andreas Safar is standing by with Jeremy Newton. Coach, you told me before the game you had to hold off Century. You did that. What a wild end to that first half. What is your message to the boys going into the locker room? Where they're counting ballots tonight. Andreas? Kirsten, Dana, we are in the Ramada Conference Center where the last of the voting process for Cass County is underway as we speak. Now I'm going to show you what that process is exactly like. This first room, they are verifying signatures here. Now this group has been working hard since Wednesday, which I learned was their busiest day by far. Now in the back corner there, they then open the ballots. And if you walk with me a little bit here, the third and final step is in this room. They put it through a scanner and then the process is complete. Red Hawks in action against Texas. Bases juiced. Leo Pena, he is not messing around here. He pounds a no-doubter into left field. It's up, it's over, and it's gone. Walk off Grand Slam to Holy end cow. the game. Pena gets a hero's welcome at home plate. Andreas, I know you're a big soccer guy, but we have to talk about golf. What a moment for Amy Olsen. Yeah, it was like a career <laughs> high and a land down under, if you will. Coach Sieben has been at the helm for nearly 20 years, and now she doesn't just have one, but two daughters on the team who are at the forefront of the program. And now that cricket's becoming quicker, it's gaining a lot more interest. The UND hockey team knows it didn't live up to par last season, with expectations always sky high for a program with such a pedigree. The players do feel, however, though, that they were up there with some of the very best in the country. It has been the buzz around town all week. SDSU, NDSU, a lot of folks I spoke to say, hey, the winner of this one, they could go all the way to the championship in Frisco and win it. They think today is the championship game. And what better weather could we have asked for? Snow melting, it's mid-December, you could have fooled me. And a lot of people out here in t-shirts and shorts and some of the tailgating groups, we got some fans here already. Some of the tailgating groups, one in particular, it's called 
Empty nesters gone wild. They've been doing this for years. Started with four families. Check it out. Who's winning the game, guys? Bison, 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 let's go! Let's go, Bison! Right here, right here, right here, right here. We got quite the mix of people, as you see. Thompson taking on Kindred. The Vikings haven't lost in more than a year, and last time they did was to the Tommies. But big moment here before half, Joe. It's been nearly 10 months, and a new barn is starting to take shape. It's with the helping hands of those holding cherished memories of Arthur's barn that makes rebuilding possible. Let me ask you here, what this get up, did you drive, did you fly, what, where did you go? Now I'm gonna ask you, this will like rile everyone up, who's gonna win the game? Uh, you! <laughs> If we were doing a crowd, is it Dukes? Dukes. Dukes. You got Dukes. If we did a crowd, she's got three bucks on it. She's got three bucks on the Dukes. And 20 points. <laughs> yeah, but well, I guess we'll see what happens. Andreas. Well, Dana, as you can see, there's really only one way in and one way out of this area. Now, I spoke with Steve Bettenhausen. He's the owner of the Senex Convenience Store and Gateway Auto Shop right next door. He says sales at the store have dropped by as much as 60%. That's the lowest they've ever been. It is the best against the worst tonight. UND is hosting last place Colorado College tonight. Who can be a tricky team at times, but North Dakota, on the other hand, has been nothing short of supreme in the world of college hockey. Number one in the pairwise range rankings facing bottom of the NCHC Colorado College. UND's Weston Mashad also on the other side of the ice too, facing a team he played with for three seasons. Scoreless in the second, Troy Conzo would get the puck for the Tigers. He unleashes a shot, composed glove save from T Peter Tomei. He had a great showing tonight. Later, big breakaway, it's Chris Wilkie. He's one-on-one -on -one with Tomei, but Tomei stands tall. Shot off the pad, we are still deadlocked at zeros. Then UND puts puck off the boards, Shane Pinto back door, wide open look, and he makes no mistake about it. One nothing Fighting Hawks and Dying Embers. Tigers pull everyone up, trying for the equalizer, but no. Tomei stands tall again. He put up a shutout, 25 saves as well. UND takes this one, one nothing the final. The Davies girls are unbeaten on the ice this season. Williston looking for their first win. Under a minute into the contest, Josie Frosley passes to Sage Cracky at the slot. Shot off the pipe and in one nothing Eagles. Shortly after, Davies doubles the lead. Senior Paige Hansen with the long range wrister. Might have gotten a deflection. She doesn't mind. Davies stays unbeaten and gets the emphatic win. MSUM women's stream trying to string together some wins, hosting Mankato today, and former Spud Brooke Tonsfeld donning the purple as well. Dragons breathing fire from the tip-off. Sarah Jacobson, big chest pass. There's Peyton Boom, and Dragons up 18-2. Mavericks dig themselves out of the hole. Kirsten Klitsky takes the rock to the hole herself and gets two. And from there, it stayed tight. Dragons down by two with seconds left. Sarah Jacobson goes to the cup, gets the basket and the foul. Wild finish there. Dragons take it 66 to 63, the final. Then the men would follow. Could the Dragons make it a clean sweep? Pick it up in the second half. Corvin seals for the Mavs. Wanted it from downtown. Alex not to and gets the two. Mavericks just down by one. Then Dragons pump it up in transition. Bounce pass and Dane Zimmer goes monster jam. Nice dunk there. Moorhead pulling away later on. Ball over the top finds Gavin Bob Gardner. He likes that too. Thank you very much. Dragons win by 25, 88 to 63 the final. And the Rough Riders made the trip down to Fargo Davies to battle the Eagles. It was a rough ride for the visitors as well. William Obioha to the rack, but it's swatted away by Owen Heckner. Then quick transition from Cameron Van Dam. Ty Satter finishes the great play. 11 to 9 in favor of Davies. Rough Riders answering through Bryce Enerson from three point land. Splash it goes, but Davies looked like they invented basketball tonight. Great passing, even better shooting. That's Mason Bits from the three Eagles. Take this one 81 to 53. All right, thank you, Andreas.